Welcome everyone, my name is Pramod Bisal and I am an IIT Delhi graduate, currently an IRSME officer. In this video, we are going to discuss about the Hall effect sensor. Okay. So what is Hall effect basically? Hall effect says that if a charged particle, let's say I am putting a charged particle here in this particular conductor, if it is put in the magnetic field, okay. so there is a magnetic field provided by North Pole and the South Pole, then it deviates from its original path and acquires a new one. Okay. So what exactly do we mean by that? Let's say this is the conductor that I am having here. Okay. And this conductor I have applied current onto this one. Okay. So uh, let's say there is a current field that has been applied to this conductor. Right? This is the negative pole, this is the positive uh, part, part of the battery. So the current will be flowing in this direction, that is the flow of the current. And since the current is flowing in this direction, the negative charge will be flowing in this direction. Okay. So initially the negative charge particle are moving in this direction from here to here but because of this magnetic field here this particular charge is going to feel a drifted force okay and its path from this straight line it is going to get deviated and now that force the magnetic force is given by i can say f magnetic is nothing but q v cross b okay that is the magnetic uh, force that is that will be applied onto the particle so q is the charge v is the drift velocity P is the magnetic field. So magnetic field direction is always given from north pole to the south pole. Okay. So this is my magnetic field direction and V is the drift velocity. Okay. So I can say V is my velocity basically. Okay. Velocity of the charged particle, whatever it is having here. Now when the charge is moving in this direction, so velocity is in this direction. Okay. So if I take this conductor outside to analyze uh, the forces onto it, then this is the direction of negative charge okay so this is the direction of negative charge and perpendicular to it this is the direction of magnetic field and this is the velocity so naturally the force is going to be with the help of a cross product v cross b okay so v cross b will be giving me a uh, direction into this one okay that is the load direction uh, we, are, we are going to get here. Okay, so uh, let's say this is one direction, this is another direction. This was my B, this was my V. I need to do the cross product V cross B over here, then I will get the force direction here. Okay, all these three are perpendicular to each other V perpendicular to B perpendicular to F, just like our XYZ coordinates. Okay, so this magnetic force direction can also be given with the help of a Fleming's left hand rule. In Fleming's left hand rule, our thumb will represent the force when we put our middle finger uh, in the direction of velocity and our ring finger in the direction of magnetic field. Okay, so that is how also we can calculate the force direction or otherwise we can directly do the cross product here and we can get the force direction. Now the important part here is that this is the force direction for a positive part because we are having Q into V cross B. But if we want the force on a negative charge, this force direction is going to get reversed. Okay, and because of the reversal of the charge, this negative uh, charge is going to come on to this direction right so uh, what do i mean by that basically is uh, let's say this is my conductor onto which i am doing the analysis right now the force on positive charge would have been in this direction right but because it is negative in nature the charge is negative we are talking about the negative charge so the force is going to be opposite so it will accumulate over here the negative charge will come from the mid and it will accumulate onto this side so that will be the force felt by the negative charge so naturally when this is negative phase it will become the positive one okay so this is going to become the positive one right now uh, let's say this particular is our width w and this is my thickness uh, sorry, let's say this is my T and this is my W because we have already, I have already written them over like this only. Okay, so this is our T and this is our W. Now if you do the analysis, then F magnetic is nothing but Q into V into B where V is the drift velocity, right? At the same time, because the charge has been accumulated onto both sides, there is going to be a generation of electric field. Okay, so F electric because of the electric field that has been generated is equal to Q into E. Okay, where E is the 
generated electric field okay some electric field has been generated there because of the accumulation of our charge right now i can say that in our balanced condition or in our equilibrium condition this electric force will be equal to magnetic force because that magnetic force is only generating the electric force okay so q e will be equal to q v b okay and finally the electric field that has been generated here is v d into b okay that is the one equation that we get here but uh, what we need finally is uh, the values for the voltage because we need to con we can only measure the voltage across these two points this point and this point we can measure the voltage across these two points so that voltage okay let's say this is our v naught okay so we already know that this is a positive one and this is a negative one so we have, we can calculate the direction of voltage okay so voltage is also perpendicular to the velocity as well as the magnetic field because it is coming with the help of a cross product okay so the generated voltage or the electric field will be perpendicular to velocity and magnetic field it will be perpendicular to both of them right and what is the relationship between a magnetic field uh, sorry this uh, potential and the electric field so v can always be given as electric field and the distance between the points uh, over which we are calculating the electric field okay so the distance between these two faces which are uh, which are generating the electric field is t right so we will get v not is equal to e into t right that is a uh, simple equation which i can now write as t the t into e i can replace with vd into b okay so that is how we can calculate the voltage but still we are unaware about the drift velocity so in order to calculate the drift velocity we use the charge density uh, concept so vd is proportional to j where j is the charge density okay j is what sorry not charge current density current density flowing from the conductor and that is given by i upon a i is the current a is the cross sectional area what cross sectional area the current was flowing in uh, this uh, the opposite direction current was flowing in this direction so this area the cross sectional area we will be using for calculating the charge density so vd is equal to now i use the uh, hall effect constant here kh to remove the proportionality into j is given by i upon a okay and vd i can calculate from here so vd is equal to what v not divided by bt right vd can be given by v not divided by bt i will replace it uh, here also so that will be equal to v not divided by bt and finally i can say that my v not or the potential difference that has been generated here across the conductor will be equal to uh, it is going to come as kh the whole hall sensor into bit upon a okay that is going to be my potential difference generated okay now i can replace this area because i already know the dimensions one is t another is w so area is what t into w right so i will replace it here t into w i can get finally v not is equal to kh into b i t upon t into w t will get cancelled out here so that will come out as v not equal to kh that is my whole constant into b i divided by w right so that is the final result that we get out of our hall effect analysis right so all these values we already know kh is the hall effect constant b is the magnetic field i is our current w is the uh, dimension of this particular conductor which is along the magnetic field okay so that we need to remember over here that w was the dimension that is along the magnetic field okay so uh, it is usually uh, uh, represented as the thickness also otherwise also if you are given a multiple dimension then we need to take w as a dimension along magnetic field okay so the dimension of the conductor or the semiconductor along the magnetic field that only we need to take otherwise our answer will get Okay. so uh, that is how we can calculate the output voltage and related with the other factors okay also the direction of output voltage can be given by v not equal to i cross b okay i cross b so that will be giving us the voltage direction i cross b right 
so it is uh, very simple uh, the analysis is very simple the effect is very simple and uh, now we have calculated the formula here also okay now let's see some questions from here and uh, that will clear out our uh, concept okay so kh also i can say that that is equal to v naught into whatever is my thickness in that uh, direction along the magnetic field divided by bi if we are given only one dimension then we will assume that is w only okay even if it says that it is t in the question it doesn't matter if it denotes it with the help of a t or with the help of a w we need to take the dimension which is along the uh, this magnetic field okay now uh, let's do some questions here which uh, some practice questions we will be doing here okay to understand the concept now uh, the hall effect census question are if magnetic field of 0.1 weber per meter square okay so that is how we denote a magnetic field in weber per meter square passed through current carrying conductor in perpendicular direction okay so current and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other in case they are not perpendicular to each other then we need to do the cross product or we need to take the sine theta between them into account okay uh, produces 10 volt at the steady rate so v naught of the output voltage is 10 volt over here if the thickness of the conductor or i can say that w will be given only if only one dimension is given means that is w okay don't get confused with the t and w denotion you use your own denotion but that is the dimension we need 0.1 meter and the magnitude of the current is i is equal to 10 ampere now we need to calculate the whole constant here okay so uh, as we have done the analysis all constant is v naught into w divided by b into i and that will be given by v naught 10 w is 0.1 meter divided by b value is 0.1 into i is 10 ampere so it will become one unit okay you can also write the units here also like it will be in volts it will be in meter and uh, it will be in weber per meter square and it will be in ampere so you can write those uh, units also or you can simply say one unit okay and um, in 2018 prelims there was a question regarding the formula for sensor voltage okay so what is the formula for sensor voltage v naught is given by kh into pi divided by w or t so that was the uh, question asked directly in our prelims okay also as i told initially itself that in 2019 the working of a whole sensor was asked so that also we have discussed over here okay now uh, let's see a few more questions and uh, then we will finish this topic now for a liquid level measurement so let's say we are having this sort of arrangement which is used to measure the level of this liquid uh, liquid which is h okay so h level we want to measure with the help of a whole sensor so we have provided a magnet here and this is the whole sensor which is carrying a current I. okay so what do we have here is used carrying 2 ampere current means the current value that is given to us is 2 ampere perpendicular to the magnetic field okay so our conditions are getting satisfied here magnetic field associated with the sensor is given as 0.2 h plus 0.1 weber per meter square where h is the water level in meter okay now if output voltage is perpendicular to both b and i uh, which is our case basically find the vo voltage magnitude if height is increased from 0 to 2 meter for sensor thickness and so we are given that w or it's better if you denote with that t also that doesn't make any difference 0.1 meter kh value is given as one unit we need to calculate the voltage here okay so it says that voltage is increased from 0 to 2 meter so we need to calculate the voltage at 2 meter so v naught with respect to 2 meter that we need to calculate so that will be given by kh into ib upon t right <coughs> ib upon t ib upon t t or w whatever we mention it with i1 into i is given as 2 b is given as 0.2 h into 0.2 into h h is 2 meter right we are computing with respect to 2 meter plus 0.1 and divided by thickness that is 0.1 so the final answer that i will be getting here is it will become 0 0.5 0 0.5 into 2 will become 1 1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10 volts okay so uh, 10 volts will be the answer here with respect to 2 meter okay we can also calculate the answer with respect to 0 meter also because then also the magnetic field is not 0 right so potential difference at 0 meter height will be equal to uh, kh is 1 into current is 2 only into 
यहाँ पे h will be given put as zero, but still point one will come there divided by point one and that will be two volts. Okay, so uh, there is an initial value of two volt whenever the water difference or water level is zero, and then at water level equal to two meter, it is increasing to ten volt. So if if we are asked the change in voltage from zero to two meter height, then that change in voltage is from two volt to ten volt. In that particular case, the answer would have been eight volt. Okay. Otherwise, if it is asking simply the voltage at two meter, then it is ten volt. If it is asking about the difference, uh, the delta voltage at two meter, then it would be eight volt. Okay. Now uh, this is our last question here. The gap between a cylindrical rod. So this is a cylindrical rod that we are having, and the hole set is assumed as zero. Means these two are contacting each other. There is no gap here. Okay. If cylindrical rod mechanism has a sensitivity of one mm per ten newton, okay. Now this rod is having a sensitivity of one mm per ten newton, or I can say that on ten newton it will uh, shift with one mm only. Okay. Then find the minimum input pressure, the pressure that I have to I have to apply here, of oil which acts on the piston and generate the output voltage. Okay. So I need to generate the output voltage. So in order to generate the output voltage, this whole sensor has to go into the magnetic field. Okay. So the distance that it need to traverse is two mm. So in order to generate the output voltage, x has to be two mm. The displacement has to be two mm. Now for one mm, I am needing ten newton force. So for two mm, I will be needing twenty newton force. Okay. So in order to supply a twenty newton force, that force is given by pressure into area rate. So I need to calculate the find the minimum input pressure. I need to calculate the pressure here only. Okay. So what I can say? Oh, pressure will be equal to force divided by area of the piston on which that force is getting applied. So 20 newton divided by area. How much will be the area? Pi by 4 into d square. D is how much? Uh, the piston diameter is 100 mm. Is 0.1 square, and that will be giving me. In this foot pressure value, okay. Now this will come out to be as two point five four six kilopascal. Just check the calculations here once, okay. Otherwise the concept is here only. Now the in second part we need to calculate the output voltage also, the generated output voltage. If the thickness of the hole sensor is point one mm. And uh, hole coefficient is 10 units. Okay, so output voltage is given by Kh Ib upon the thickness, right? Because we had uh, denoted the thickness with W. Okay, so that is equal to Kh is 10 units into I. I is our current. Current was how much? 2 amps. It is given to me already. Current is 2 amps. Uh, magnetic field is given as 5 Weber per meter square divided by the thickness is given as how much was the thickness? Thickness of the hole sensor is 0.1 mm. Okay, now the uh, value is in mm, so that will come out to be. Uh, how much will it be? I think. We use either do it. Okay, 10 to the power minus 3, so it is becoming 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 6 volts. Okay. so uh, that will be the answer uh, we need to calculate it okay well thank you for watching the video and uh, that is all about the hall sensor and we have done enough number of questions also we have seen the previous year questions also it is a very simple concept and uh, the only things you need to remember from the theory is like fleming's left hand rule and uh, the formula here and uh, also the balancing of electric and magnetic field and these things only okay thank you for watching the video